I'm Nick Pettit. I'm Jason Seifer. And you're watching The Treehouse Show, your weekly dose of internets where we talk about all things web design, web development, and more. In this episode, we'll be talking about CSS shapes, JavaScript, font combinations, and more. Let's check it out. First up is this really cool article over on the CSS Tricks blog called Working with Shapes in Web design. This sounds like it could really get my website in good shape. Don't be such a square, Nick. All we right. can circle back to that if you want. Speaking of circles, you can use the border radius property to set the border radius on an element to make it a circle. Look, it really did come full circle. Bam. Wow. Amazing. You can also create shapes. I'm using over it. You can also create shapes using the border proper property. Really? That border is on crazy. And you can set some of the borders to be transparent, and it will create shapes like this. And there's a few more methods here. Let's look at this one, rotating shapes with transform. Ooh, uh, can you rotate in directions and also use shapes of animals? I, I think you can. I would, like a, I would like an arrow going up. And a dog, an up dog. Where, where'd you On hear? On the website. Up dog, okay. Anyway, you can take this square, turn it on its side, and call it a diamond. Look, shapes. <laughs> Marketing. There's also many other techniques here, and that's really what this blog post is about. It's about all the different techniques that you can use, not necessarily just the different shapes, but the techniques that you can use to create oh, different shapes. Look at that, you can use an ellipse. CSS, you can use an ellipse. Can we do a uh, heart shape? Uh, make I, a total ellipse of the heart? I, 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 think, I think you could make a total ellipse of the heart. Cool. Mm -hmm. Next up, we have a project called Purify CSS. Now, what this does is runs your CSS through a filtration system thereby removing all impurities. No, what it really does is remove any unused CSS declarations from your website. Now, this also works with single page applications. Super easy to use, just go ahead and install it via NPM. And then, here is a little example about how it worked. Anytime your class name is intact in your code, it will leave that in the site, but if not, you can download a new version of your CSS that has all of the unused declarations removed, and then boom, you are good to go. Now you can save a ton of bandwidth for your users by removing unused CSS declarations. Now this is gonna be particularly important if you are using a big CSS or JavaScript framework that has a lot of stuff that you're probably not using all of it in your code, things like Bootstrap, Foundation, tons of CSS, and odds are you're not using all of it. So Purify is a great way to go if you are trying to save your users some bandwidth. Very cool stuff. Well, next up is JavaScript the right way. And, you know, I feel like I must have been doing JavaScript the wrong way because... Or the left way. Yeah. Or uh, the up dog way. You keep saying that. Anyway... On the site, you can choose your path. So if you're just getting started with JavaScript, here are some good resources for getting started. It tells you, well, what is JavaScript? What's the current version? What is the DOM? And then it gives you some information about JavaScript code style, such as conventions and linting. And let me scroll back up to choose your path. There's other stuff, for example, such as podcasts and screencasts, but you're already watching one of those, so no need to click there. And then you can also click on something like who to follow, and you'll notice that Jason is not listed here. So that's how you know that this is an excellent resource for actually learning something about JavaScript. That's, that's mean-spirited and upsetting. Next up, we have a JavaScript style guide put out by Airbnb. Now, a uh, style guide is really important to follow uh, when you are working with a large team. It'll establish conventions that everybody should use when creating code, thereby making it easier for new members to join your team. 
also helpful when you're getting dressed in the morning. This is not going to help you get dressed in the morning. Oh wow, this shirt doesn't go well with these arrow functions. Anyway, so uh, this is an ECMAScript 6 version of the JavaScript style guide. There is an ECMAScript 5 only guide as well that you can follow. Now, we're not going to go over everything here because as you can see, there are a ton of different options. But uh, what I really like about this guide is if we scroll down a little bit over here to object creation, it shows you a bad and good way to create different objects. Now the whole style guide repeats this pattern of showing you a bad and good way of doing things, which is going to help you when writing your code. It's going to make things just a bit more readable and also let you learn from it, maybe like learn some new patterns that you haven't seen before. Now, like I said, we are not going to go over everything on here, but there is a ton of good stuff in here. Look at this for arrays, for example. Use the literal syntax for array creation. We don't do new array, just create some brackets right there. Boom, good to go. And there, in some browsers, is a little bit of a performance advantage to doing that. So you know that they really did their homework when creating this style guide. Now, uh, next up, we have destructuring. And that is kind of how I feel about the Treehouse show sometimes, and also mine and Nick's relationship in general. So anyway, if you are in need of a good JavaScript style guide, go ahead and check out this link in the show notes. It is right below this video. Next up, we have this website called Great Font Combinations. And that is a great name for this website because that's exactly what it is. If you scroll down here, you can see some different combinations of fonts. Is there a Nick font and a Jason font? There is not, and I'm not sure really why there would be. There should be. Uh, so there's a couple of different examples here of different types of websites or applications. And underneath each one of them, they point out what fonts are being used. So you can see, well, what's the header font and what's maybe the body font. And it's a good way to kind of get some inspiration and look at these real world of examples of font combinations. Because I don't like that one. It's not my type. There's a lot of different websites that do this. We've covered some of them in the past. And this is nice because it kind of points out, well, here's what these fonts actually might look like together. It gives you, it, it gives a, you a good baseline for choosing a font, period. Right. Well, Jason, I think, I think you and I are the greatest combination. Oh, thanks, Nick. Yeah. Um, However, we do have some mildly disappointing news. This is going to be the last episode of The Treehouse Show. We have really enjoyed uh, hanging out with you guys and bringing you the latest and greatest in front-end and occasionally back-end technologies. And I've occasionally enjoyed hanging out with Jason. You know, that's, uh, that's a pretty good note to end on. Nick, who are you on Twitter if they want to... Uh, Keep up dog with us. I am at Nick RP. And I am at Jay Cypher. Thanks so much for watching, and we'll up dog next week. Okay, what's what is up dog? <laughs>